Jim T. Chong, the rock star. You are tuned into the power of Jim. And uh, as I mentioned, I am right there, Jim T. Chong. But what I want to do is introduce you to somebody that has a very special guest today. We're going to announce that is my colleague, Mr. Jim Meyer from Remax Gold. And I'm thrilled because uh, we, this is probably one of the, the biggest, uh, most popular uh, guests we've ever had. So we're thrilled. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Ricky Carruth. Ricky, thank you very much for being on our show. We really appreciate it. Uh, you are one of the top realtors in the nation. You're also a coach. Uh, there are realtors that make a lot of money. There are coaches that make a lot of money. I don't know of anybody else that does both. So nice. what you, you, you make at least a million dollars a year selling real estate. Why on earth do you even need to do the coaching? Well, you know, to be honest with you, real estate is localized. I mean, you know, you're, you're bound to your local market. You know, I'm in small town, Alabama. Okay. I'm not in LA. I'm not in New Sweet York. home, Alabama. Sweet home. Uh -huh. I'm not in a big city. Whereas, you know, I mean, you could potentially make, you know, 50 to a hundred million, you know, over there, possibly if you're one of the top guys, I don't know what, what the uh, possibilities are, but not here where I am in small town, Alabama. So I mean, such a, such a localized place to such a small town, you know, decided, well, you know, that's great. I'm dominating here, but if I really want to go big, then I've got to do something global. Mm -hmm. And so once I hit my goals in real estate, I kind of got bored because you know, once you get to a certain point in real estate and you're just basically selling a hundred properties a year, making this money um, through past clients and referrals, you don't really have all that time spent trying to prospect anymore. I can now take that time and go build other businesses. So that's when I decided to write the book, start speaking, coaching, and all that good stuff. So I don't know. I think it's just a, a thing where I just wanted to continue getting better. I'm not done yet. It's like if I were towards the end of my life, I might have called it a day, you know, right there. But since I'm kind of still in my prime, I might as well go out and build another business that's not just local, but global. You know, you say that so passe. I might as well just go build another business. <laughs> but um, one thing I want to ask you, uh, everything has a beginning, right? We, we talk a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I talk personally a lot about that. And in real estate, that is an interesting arena as well. So I also deal in the financial arena. And so I just want to ask you, what got you interested in real estate? And, you know, those of you that are listening, I want you to consider is real estate really the game for you? Um, and, you know, also, you know, I just wanted to, to just direct that to you because I think it's important on why people do what they do. So why real estate for you? Well, you know, I was 20 years old, you know, I've been doing this 18 years. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I uh, went to four different colleges in two years. Didn't know what I wanted to study. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I failed a history class. And, you know, I just decided college wasn't going to be the path for me. And I realized real estate was one class to get your license. So it's like, okay, one class to get my license and have the same opportunities as doctors and lawyers that have to go to school for eight to 10 years for one Thanks. class. Okay. <laughs> so I'm really good at finding what the most efficient thing to do is. And then just really zoning in and focusing on that. So that's what I did when I realized it was one class to get a career started that could literally be a sky's the limit type opportunity. I mean, it was just too good to pass up. So that's kind of the reason why I moved in that direction. I've always wanted to help people. So I felt like this was a way where I could help people buy and sell properties. Um, so that, that was the beginning motivations and kind of what led me to that. That's great. Now, uh, we've got a lot of people watching us who, who sell real estate and they might, uh, they might be looking for ways to uh, increase their business. But there are a lot of people that just want to uh, learn about how somebody like you gets motivated because uh, you do, a, a, uh, like you say, you got a lot of people just coming back, re uh, repeat business, referrals. You probably never have to pick up the phone again to, to do any cold calling. But when you were doing the cold calling, when you started out, how did you motivate yourself? And then when you started making a lot of money, how did you motivate yourself to keep on doing it when you could have just sat around and done nothing? Well, I mean, number one, you know, for me, I, I, it's hard for me to relate to anyone who isn't trying to be the very best in the world at what they do. 
You know what I mean? Okay. So, so when I, when I was young, uh, you know, my, my, you know, early twenties and I'm looking at the market as a whole and I'm sitting here doing, you know, a hundred thousand a year and I see these other guys doing, you know, two and three million a year, you know, and I, I look at them and I say, you know, they're, you know, what makes them so much better, you know? And so that, that's what drives you. For me, it's, it's, there's a lot of competition involved for me, real competitive. So I see the people that are doing much better and, and I don't, I have zero envy towards them. I have zero, you know, resentment for their success at all. I just use that as motivation to want to beat them. You know, it's all, it's all, for me, it's all about helping the most, whoever helps the most people is going to win. And so now when you were that, first trying to teach yourself how to get to that next level, yeah. Did you find it hard to, when you go and, and talk to a successful realtor to, to get some of their, uh, their teachings from them or did, were they kind of, did they kind of hide their, their secrets from you? I mean, I didn't talk to too many of them. You know, what, what's so cool is, is you can just go on MLS and pull up all the agents and you can see what they sold. You can see what they got listed. You can see the patterns. You can see how many they list a month. You can see what properties they're selling. You can learn a lot about their business through just looking in MLS and studying the different agents in your market. You know, once you, once you figure out who the top agents are and you study their business on MLS, you know, and you know how many listings they're getting, you know how many sales they're producing, you kind of understand the, the, the numbers behind where their production is. Then you just have to visualize the work that goes behind putting those numbers together. Mm. And then you say, okay, I'm just going to outwork that person to get more listings per month. I know what the benchmark is. As soon as I know what the benchmark is, it is over. You know, if I know I need to get 15 listings a month to be the top agent in the area, then all I have to do is figure out my work ethic and strategy to get those 15 listings and focus just on that, nothing else. The problem, man, is that new agents come in the business or even experienced agents, they don't know exactly what the most effective methods are to grow their business and to build their business. And so there's, there's all these different methods out there, tons of them. And so what they do is, is they don't know which one's the best. So they can't focus on just one or two because they're scared that might be the best. So they, they, they focus on eight to 10. They never become really good at just a few things. Dude, you only need to focus on a good three things, three or four tops. Focus on that. I don't, I don't use social media. I'm a real estate business. Never have. Um, you know, it's all voice to voice, which is the reason why technology will not replace real estate agents. It's email marketing, which has the highest organic reach over everything in the world, except for text messaging, which really isn't used in business that much yet. It's coming, you know, and then from there, I want to focus on where am I new? You know, how do I get new leads? How do I, you know, how do I nurture those that are looking to do something in the next 90 days? You know, and I use that email to build my brand with the ones that aren't looking to do anything in the next 90 days. <laughs> it's, it's very, 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 very simple and everybody wants to complicate it. But focusing on who those top producers are, visualizing yourself outworking those. If you work harder than the number one agent in your area, you could be the guy, the last guy in MLS, ranked number last, and you outwork the number one agent that day, then you were number one that day. You put together 365 days where you're not, you outworked them, then you're going to be number one. So you're, you're telling me <clears throat> that really from what you do, because there's some other big players I know of in the same company that you're in. And the whole thing is, is that it really is about really implementing a system. We hear that a lot, right? It's not so much. And, and of course, mindset, there's a lot of things in that, right? Like for instance, there are some people that, Let's take singing as an example, right? There's some people, they can kind of work their way, but there needs to be a little bit of natural talent there, let's just say, right? right, so, right. You're, so you're telling me from what, you, you, what you're saying, in general, in general, the work ethic is really important, the vision is important, and the plan is really important. That's what I hear you saying, and that pretty much most everyone can achieve it if they really apply the things that you just mentioned. Exactly. Maybe so, man. Maybe so. Work ethic is needed, but it, it's not the entire mm -hmm. pot, right? right. First, sure. you gotta believe, first, you got to believe 100%. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe 100 million percent in yourself and what you're doing and that you're there to help people and you outwork yeah. everyone, nothing's going to work. From there, mm -hmm. you got to have work ethic. From there, yeah. you got to adapt. Mm -hmm. And then you got to be patient. That's the hardest yeah. part is being patient. Everybody wants it tomorrow, next month. You know, it, it's, 
it takes you visualize this. I get in the business in 02. Mm -hmm. I was 20 years old. I make a million before I'm 23. Okay. I lose it all in the crash and go back to roofing houses, sleeping in my car and working on an oil rig. So you've been through it up yeah. and down a little bit. <laughs> 2008, I get back in the business and realize the reason I lost everything is because I didn't realize business was unlimited for every single agent forever. And that closings happen every day, regardless. Then I start building my business on people, not deals. And between 08 and 14, it took that long to get to be the number one REMAX agent in Alabama selling 100 properties a year. So think about it. Made it, lost it, came back. And then it took me six years to get to a really – I wasn't even at a comfortable place at that point. I was just kind of, you know, just getting to maybe a comfortable place within six years. And everybody wants it, you know, if they don't make a million dollars in two, two or three months, then, you know, they're out. They're going to go try something else. It's just insane. So the patience part is one of the biggest parts of the, the entire equation. But you got to have all four, man. Believe, work hard, adapt, and be patient. Yeah, right. and one of the things that you, you teach is uh, making the phone calls. And what I've learned is if you make a 1,000 phone calls, you're most likely going to make thousands of dollars. But if you make zero phone calls, you make zero dollars. And you can adapt your presentation and do better and better every time you talk to people. And then we can watch you because the cool thing is you do live trainings where you get on the phone and actually talk to people. And so anybody, can, how, how does somebody find you right now? Oh, say like on YouTube or whatever. Man, the best, most central place to go is to zero to diamond.com. That's where the whole, the mother load is. <laughs> That's the mother load. There's the course, the 90 day action plan, all my social networks. And I answer every message on Instagram, every single message. So if anybody has any questions, that's the best place. Um, but yeah, I, I do live calls live um, on YouTube uh, frequently. I also bring other agents on and let them make calls and I'll coach them through the calls in between the calls, which is very, very good and interesting uh, content. Um, so uh, I do a lot of interviews just like this you know, with people that I bring on my show. Um, so there's, there's a lot, lot to it, man. But the 90 day action plan is literally what I would do. If I see when I started, I've made a hundred thousand calls in my career. I haven't made a call in the last four years. Um, back when I was making calls, there were no dialers. Now you got a dialer. You can just click a button and call a hundred people in an hour and a half and still have the whole day ahead of yourself. You know, back when I was making calls, I was doing great to make 100 calls in eight hours, dialing with my finger, you know, and the data is far better. You know, people are complaining about data. Oh, it's wrong numbers. And there's a few disconnected. And it's like, dude, come back, come back to where I, I used to be and, and <laughs> copy and paste them into Spokio and whitepages.com and bigfoot.com, you know, for eight hours to find 100 people to find out that 70 of them are disconnected. I mean, the data is, is ridiculous and the time that it spends to get that data and dial those numbers is absolutely insane, you know, at this point in time. I mean, new agents have it completely made and they don't even realize <laughs> yeah. it. And, you know, you, you, you mentioned something that's really interesting. Uh, you know, earlier on, I caught this as well. You don't, you don't even think that way. You just think big. You think pretty grand, right? It's what I get from you, right? And right. You, you have... You have you have that, that title from zero to diamond, right? And I, you know, I'm sure that the implication is pretty, pretty, pretty uh, obvious, but tell us, what is it about the title, you know, that you think is significant that people need to think about zero to diamond? Well, diamond comes from the REMAX system, which a diamond is a million dollar a year producer. That's the award you get when you make a million dollars. Um, so that's kind of where it came from. And, you know, zero means <laughs> from the very bottom, okay? Right. So from nothing to a million dollars a year is really what, what it's all about. Some agents don't want to make a million. They just want to make 200,000. I talk to them all the time. They don't want to make 300. They just want to make 200. That's it. They'll be good with it. And that's fine and dandy. That's their definition of diamond is, you know, diamond represents whatever you want to do in life. You know, whatever makes you happy, whatever you desire. Some people don't want to make a million. Some people want to make 10 million. So it's all about whatever you want and I want to help you get there, you know? So through everything that I've done, some coaches come into the game, they've sold 19 properties over a two year period and now they're selling courses for 
you know, I actually came in, lost it all, came back six years, get back to 100, and then I don't start writing a book or anything for three more years of 100 deals a year. And I've continued to sell 100 every year, every year, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. You know, it's just going to keep going. So I can help anyone do, I've spoke all over the world. I've self-published books. I have a nice following that's growing fairly well. So I can help anyone do any of these things that they want to do. So diamond is whatever you want to do in life. You tell Ricky, Ricky will help you do that. So, okay. so it does not have to be real estate if they, uh, anything. anything. So, so if uh, Mr. Trump wanted to become president of the United States, you could take him from zero to. Call, the White I, House. Uh, first, I got to call Trump. Uh -huh. and, you know, put a good word in. Okay, yeah, good, good. Does That's he right. Calls, and he will good. listen because you're Ricky Cruz, and we know you have his number because you know you've been told many times, Ricky, don't lose that number whenever they give you. Yeah, that, right. There you go. So, I'm yeah. sure he still has it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, in terms of this whole mindset, I, I'm very big on that. And the whole thing about just, you know, you have a lot of people that talk about these success principles and stuff too. I mean, they're, what I've boiled it down to speaking to a lot of people that come from zero to hero, you know, uh, zero to diamond, same concept. But I wanted to ask you just in terms of certain people, of course, you know, you throw out these big words, you know, diamond, success, right? Yeah. What makes, what is the difference between somebody, let's say everyone's starting at zero, because that's the implication partly, you know, we never forget where we came from. What is the determining factor of whether somebody is able to make it to that top level versus somebody that's not? What do you think it is in general, from your perspective? You've talked to a lot of people. I'm sure you can identify, oh, after a little bit of time, hey, this person's going to make it, this person's not, just from your perspective and experience. Dude, it literally comes down to one thing. One thing separates those people that don't make it to the people that make it. I had an agent uh, last year, first year in the business, sold 100 properties in his first year, right? 100 properties. 100 properties as a single agent, right? He's in Mississippi. You know, this guy is literally the four-minute mile. You know, everybody said four-minute mile can never be done. Then he did it. Now everybody's doing it. Same right. thing with this guy. He did 100 deals his first year. Everybody sees it's possible. Now they're taking my, my system. I have a system to sell 100 properties in a year. You could be a new agent, experienced, whatever. You could go from selling five to 100 if you just watch this video <laughs> and implement what I'm saying. It's not real difficult. And so the biggest thing for me, the, the biggest difference between people that can actually do that and not, because I talk to agents who literally, I, I talk to them and I think, man, you know, if they only knew the power that they had, Wow. You know, that they could actually do this much production, but they don't do that much production. Why? One thing, confidence. They don't believe they can do it. They don't believe in yourself. They don't think people like them. They don't believe that you know, they're not willing to put, they're not confident that they're willing to commit to the actual work load that it takes to produce that much results. They're just not confident in anything, you know, and uh, some of them want to be confident, but they're, they're not confident subconsciously. They don't even realize that they're not confident. They're just like, what's wrong? I don't know what's wrong. Well, what's wrong is, is you don't believe that. Like for me, I just see it and then I do it. You know what I mean? Like three years ago, I said I was going to be the top coach in the industry. Now I'm somewhere in the conversation now, right? I haven't, I haven't topped that list out. Mm -hmm. sure. Although there, although there were some polls that I saw, in some certain Facebook groups that I'm not even in that had me as a overwhelmingly top coach in the industry, but that's still not convincing to me. I want to actually dominate completely. No questions asked, which is just a matter of time. So I see it back when I said I was going to do this, there were people that were like, okay, whatever. And this, sure. and that. I mean, there were people that said that when I said I was going to play football in high school, what happened? You know, there are people that said, I was, you know, when I got in real estate when I was 20 years old, what happened? You know, for all these things, you may look at the very beginning moments and think, I don't know about that. I don't know if that person can actually do those things. But if that person has the confidence to just see it and do it, it's just a matter of time. And like yeah. uh, Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues. The clues are out there. And not only are they out there, you're living proof that you basically just have to do it 
you get up in the morning, you got a plan, you enact your plan and you become successful. And so anybody out there listening to us who wants to be successful in any realm would, uh, would be very uh, smart to track down Ricky Carruth. And, uh, and so many of these big coaches, I, I doubt that your competitors are number one, even available for their students to talk to because they got people underneath them that are just reading off of uh, cards. Yeah. You're, you're talking to people and, uh, and that, that comes down to like what you said, it's all about helping people. So uh, hopefully what you're telling us is going to rub off on our industry and make, uh, make our reputation much better because so many people, uh, what, what do you say to somebody that says, Hey, Ricky, I don't need a realtor. I'm going to just go on uh, Zillow or whatever and find the house that I want and, and write up that offer with that agent. What would you say? I say, be my guest. Uh -huh. You know, you think you can it's be that simple. <laughs> you, you think you can be a real estate agent? Go for it. I would love to see you try to do my job. You know what I mean? <laughs> See, yeah. see, a lot of these people don't realize what agents do. They think they just wake up in the morning, sign a contract from their bed upside down, and go back <laughs> to sleep and get a big check. You know what I mean? They don't understand all the very detailed tasks that go into every single deal. See, we're the facilitator. We're here to keep the buyer and seller. We're, we're, we're the middleman to, to make sure this thing goes smooth, you know, and to make sure there's no friction on either side and kind of take the brunt of the problems that come up and really make it an enjoyable experience for our clients. And, you know, when they start to get in there and try to sell their house by owner or, you know, deal with all the showings and all the people lying to them and all the people asking for stuff that never make offers and all this and all that, and then trying to negotiate a deal and then all the legal stuff, you know, or if they try to buy a house, it's the same thing. They're going to run into all those problems that they wish they had an agent there to take the <laughs> brunt of those problems to where they have an enjoyable, you know, they want to have an enjoyable experience when they buy that house. This is going to be the house they live in. This is going to be the house they raise their kids in. They want to have good memories. They don't want to go into the deal, you know, with all these problems and, you know, just hating the situation. And then they get in the house and they're like, have a bad taste in their mouth already because, you know, the deal went, you know, so bad with, with certain things. But for an agent, all those bad things that happen is just another that's just another day at the office. Those are just normal things that happen on just about every deal that we can help. We can help them, you know, we can take the brunt of those problems and, and help them through those situations and make it a more enjoyable experience. And Hey, for a buyer, for a buyer, real estate agents are free of charge. So is there, I mean, there's no reason in the world why a buyer wouldn't have free representation of a professional, you know, to help them through the process. But Hey, if they want, if they want to try it on their own, be my guest. I would love to sit back and, and I'll go sell all these other properties and make some money. And I'm just going to sit here and get some popcorn and get ready for this because it's fixing to be funny. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's very interesting because even like in the financial arena, technically is, you know, we are not charged by the hour real estate. You don't sell the house. You don't get paid. Very bottom yeah. line. A lot of it's based on the value of the home, right? And so it's really, it's really interesting the perception because I could change my home and my car for free. I really could, but there's a reason why I don't do it. It costs me a lot of time, and it could cost me, end up costing me uh, more money later if I don't do certain things right, right? I might right. strip a bolt. I don't have the right things, and you know, just like any other. Uh, 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 you know, thing that needs to get done. If you get an expert, you get somebody that's been doing it for a while, or at least knows the steps, it saves a lot of time. And so there are people, you know, definitely there are ways to sell your, your house yourself, but there are a lot of things I'm understanding, you know, that you can open yourself up for legal, legal things you might not know about a lot of things behind the scenes you're unaware of. And so getting an expert, is uh, really very important. So thank you for just uh, highlighting that as well. Especially if it sounds like your your book, you know, I've been reading about you just preparing a little bit for this, but it really saves the ABCs, one, two, threes in terms of what you need to do. And basically, if you take action, you follow a system, you're going to be a lot better off than if you 
take no action or take the wrong action, which could actually be a lot more costly, right? We learn from our experience, but sometimes it's nice just to know what you're doing from the start or at least know the, the things that you want to get uh, done so uh, properly. So yeah. that's yeah. really pretty exciting. Well, you know, as you're, um, as you're educating people, obviously you have – uh, a very big why in terms of what you're doing. What what would you say is really your driving force, your primary why of why you keep thriving, why you keep moving forward? There's a lot of people with, you know, different amounts of money. You know, we all have different lifestyles. You know, obviously you can live really comfortably if you just chose to, you know, I just to live a comfortable life and just do things and put it on auto autopilot. What keeps Ricky Caruth going? Well, um, uh, you know, I've never been, for a long time, I was always tied to the, the results, right? Always wanted to make so much money and do all this and make this many deals and all that stuff. 2014, the first year I started selling 100 properties a year, I realized something, and that was that you just, you can't focus on the results, right? You just have to focus on your day-to-day, -day, you know, because I can't tell you what's going to happen in a year. But I can tell you based on your daily actions that if you do these actions consistently over time, I can tell you exactly where you'll be in five years. I don't know what's going to happen short term, but I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. Point. Right. So so that's kind of how I live my life. I'm, I'm taking these daily actions and I'm more looking at where these actions are going to put me in five to 10 years, not this year. You know, so I'm more of a five or 10 year visual person than what's going on right now. So you can look at my, my year to year now and say, my gosh, you don't have to work anymore. What's the deal? You know, but I'm not looking at year to year. Right. I don't, I'm not even paying attention. You know, I'm more looking at where I'm going to be in five years. And then after five or 10 years, I may look and I say, okay, you know, I want to maybe do some different things with my life. I don't know, you know, but for right now, I'm putting everything I have into making this industry a better place. So what I'm going to do is, is just try to help every agent that I can one by one and try to do my best to reduce that failure rate in the industry. And, you know, through that, I, I believe organically through what I'm doing that the things that I do and the way I've built my business and how I'm creating my content and everything else, it's geared towards real estate agents, but this stuff is universal, right? This stuff can be used for any industry you know, for anybody, this is routines, this is sales, this is helping people, this is, you know, creating systems, everything else. This is, this is business 101 for me in the new world that we live in. So I think organically at some point, I'm not, I'm not trying to force the issue, but organically at some point, uh, I'm, I'm a hundred percent positive that I'll actually branch out organically without even trying into other industries, start speaking to other industries, start, helping people of all different industries, you know, and so I'm just going to keep going because the, the ultimate goal is just to help as many people as I can on earth of any walk of life, of any industry, understand that it's not about high pressuring people into doing things. You know, it's about using our personalities, our strengths, scaling who we are through a personal brand and then helping as many people as we can, whether they want to do something now or not, Let's cultivate that and nurture that for when they do. Because if you think about it, and you guys may know the numbers, I don't. I need to look it up. But, you know, every human being on average does a real estate transaction X amount of times in their life. And I bet you that number is fairly high. They do X amount of deals and they refer X amount of people. So regardless if this human being wants to buy or sell something today or not, by you creating a relationship with them for the rest of your life and building a brand with them forever, you're putting yourself at least in position. You may not get it, but you're at least the possibility is there where you may be their agent for life. And if you're their agent for life, look at how many deals and how many referrals you're going to get over the lifetime of that agent. And then, and then through that, how many thousands of people can we, can we make create that connection with, you know, to build this incredibly large business? Yeah, I think this is um, this is important for people to understand. You know, just just in terms of your passion, your directive. We hear this word "why." What does it really mean? It's really the driving force of a lot of things. And of course, the belief you talked about, really the confidence that belief um, that belief really instills on you. So, you know, as you're listening out there, I hope you're 
you're looking at this, and if real estate is your, the thing you're looking at, definitely you want to connect with Ricky Caruth. You can look up his name on the internet and his, uh, his site, zero2diamond.com. Um, you can pick up a lot of great information as well. So, Jim, I know we're about ready to wrap up here, but, uh, Jim, just your final thoughts and just uh, – just anything you want to add? Well, just another thing. Discussion. It's not just real estate. If you do want to become president of the United States or, or, or run a revolution or whatever your goal is, I think Ricky is your guy. So, Ricky, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor to have you because you've taught me a lot. I've been implementing uh, your uh, stuff from the uh, doing the constant contact. Uh, every uh, Well, we're doing it every two weeks. I think you do it every week, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm not as good at coming up with content. So, but we send stuff out every other week. Um, we, I'm making phone calls. Uh, I've got my assistant waiting out here. She's actually going to chain me to the desk until I make 300 phone calls today. So nice. uh, I use whatever tactics I can to, to be productive. And it all started by listening to you. So thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate you. Right, any pleasure. final words from you, Mr. Caruth? Uh, you know, guys, just, I hope something I said on here kind of inspired you in some kind of way to, uh, you know, that maybe, maybe takes your spirals, your business and life in a different direction. Um, you know, maybe I want you guys to know too, that, you know, it's not all about work, you know, work as hard as you can and focus on work when, when you're working, but at five, six o'clock, shut it down and don't even think about work anymore for the rest mm -hmm. of the evening, you know, spend time with your family, do something that, um, that you kind of want a guilty pleasure thing, watch a movie, something, don't worry about work. That way you can recharge for the next day and really play at a high level every single day. You know what I mean? So get up early, uh, work hard and then relax uh, and then repeat. It's all about routines and some of these routines can be boring, but it's, it's what it's the foundation of success. So go get them guys. And uh, I, I enjoy being on the show today. Great. Thank well, we, appreciate we just want to thank, uh, thank you definitely for being, uh, being on here, really giving a lot of value. And so, you know, really when we think about ourselves, even as individuals, whether we are talking about a local market or just in a national market, really the concepts seem to be pretty much the same in terms of success principles. You've got to take action. But what drives that action? Your belief, your confidence, it's a skill that's very, very important. And of course, to get to where you want to go, one very important thing is you got to know where you want to end up, right? So I appreciate just uh, the story of Ricky Caruth, you know, really understanding, you know, he shared his ups and downs, but the whole thing is also never forget where you came from and live to where you want to be. This is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, along with Jim Meyer from Remax Gold and Ricky Caruth. <laughs> and you've been listening to The, the Power, Power of, Jim. of Jim and Ricky Caruth too, right? Zero to Diamond.